DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live on a Wednesday night here with our Socially Mobile with Jared Wade. Good evening, Jared. What's up, John? I'm wearing my Disc Jockey I, News TV shirt. There we go, Insider. Yeah. Boom! Well, Boom, nice. diggity. I, didn't even, I, I wasn't even paying attention. We were so so busy trying to get it streams. and Because and, this is the first show we have done in a couple of months where we are simulcasting this in two different locations. You're watching this on YouTube or you're watching this on Facebook because we're talking about <gasps> Facebook Live. Da, 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 da. We were almost in harmony right there. We Did you hear it? We were... It was off by like a half a half a half a pitch, but we were almost, almost in perfect there. harmony. And, and considering that we are so far apart, you know, in the, in the internet, I mean, just being even close in the same in the same place. <laughs> <pretty good. laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. We'll go Absolutely. With that. So Facebook Live. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has been using this or not lately. I, I'm, I'm a big advocate on it. So we're just going to jump right into it. We're going to start talking about this because there's all kinds of stuff. That so Facebook we Live. Can, there's, there's so much that we can dig into on this. Um, I'm not going to get too technical for you guys. I'm not going to get into the, I'll give you some examples for some software that you're going to be able to use, some different types of hardware. But for the most part, it's going to be very much a, here's what it looks like, of course, on your tablet or your smartphone. And then how you can see it set up. I'm going to give you some, some background on it. The only thing that I don't have for you, and you know I love my stats, I don't have too much stat work for you because it's still relatively new. It's still in that early phase of how the whole Facebook Live world is working. So with that, John, did you have anything you wanted to start with before we kind of just start rolling with what Facebook let's just, Live is? Let's just start rolling because we're going to, there's going to be a lot of things that I can I can add to this. This is one of the few areas that we have discussed in the last, to what, 10 shows. This is, this is show 10? I think is it? Are we in the double digits? I think so. I think Jimmy had this one listed as episode 10 tonight. Oh, so weeks. Now only 90 more to go. Oh, until excuse, we me, hit... excuse me. Episode 8. I'm sorry. My bad. Jimmy said we were Forget almost it. to 10. Yeah. Uh, yeah I just, we'll, we'll wrap this show it. up and we're going to start at 2 yeah. more tonight. <laughs> <laughs> real quick. This is the precursor to the, 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 precursor to Epis the actual real episode show. Episode 9 is starting in 3 minutes and episode 10 is 4 minutes after that. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't throw anybody off. No, not a bit. Uh, so yeah, so, let's, okay. let's jump into it. Facebook Live. If you don't know what Facebook Live is, uh, you can if you go, if you type in Facebook Live in any web browser, you're going to find out about what the heck this thing is instantly. Uh, simplicity. Facebook Live is what YouTube and what Periscope tried to do, and they got the ball rolling, but Facebook really solidified that ball into a giant snowman. And what I mean by that is Periscope didn't have the groundwork set up for the distribute distributing sources that it needed to have it. Facebook, of course, as you if you're watching this, you already know Facebook is the king. It's the master control program. It's a Tron reference for any of my fellow nerds out there. Ben Stowe is watching. He'll he'll get that one. Uh, <clears throat> they're the 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 big the big boys up to bat for social media. So what better way to introduce some sort of a live service then through Facebook. Now, we've said multiple times, I've talked about Facebook stories in the past. Facebook is not shy and they're not quiet about if they see something and it works, they're going to copy it. And they're they're not gonna say, oh no, this is something totally different. They will blatantly say, oh no, this is exactly like Periscope or nope, this is exactly like Snapchat. We're just doing it. And we're probably gonna do it better because we have the time and the money and the resources to do it better. So Facebook Live is, in all intents and purposes, Facebook Live is a way for you to be able to stream live wherever you're at, as long as you have your cell phone or some sort of a device that you can get onto the internet. That's the 
black and white, as basic as you can get to it, simplistic explanation of what Facebook Live is. Now, I'm going to focus a little bit heavier towards the business side of, of how you can use Facebook Live. It, you can look at this and you can say, how am I going to use this for personal stuff? You can use it for pretty much the same stuff. Oh, yeah. But if you're watching this, you're probably a small business owner of some degree. So I'm going to focus like when we look into the tablet and how to set it up and how to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, start up your, your, your live uh, show it's going to be more on the business pages aspect versus your personal account. But you can do it the same exact way both ways. Um, so here's a few things that as I was scouring the internet, trying to find some information about Facebook Live that I can pass along to you guys, uh, a few things to keep in mind as we are going through the, the app and, and getting a live program started. Um, first and foremost, <clears throat> and this should be like the number one thing that you do when you anticipate going live, unless it's just a spur of the moment type of a thing. You want to communicate to your fans, to anybody that is a subscriber to your page, you want to tell them when you're gonna go live, if at all possible. If you can give people at least a day's notice, it's gonna be helpful to you. Now again, I don't have stats. I don't have, hey, you know, over the last two years, this is what statistics have said. But it's, it's if you look back on when Facebook Live hit, and really started gaining some momentum, they're noticing trends where people that are giving a, a heads up are getting a better re uh, response. Oh, yeah. And that's sure. gets, gets key to do. So something as simple as a simple post uh, saying, hey, tomorrow night at about 8 o'clock Eastern, I'm going to be going live and I'm going to be taking, oh, I don't know, uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, wedding music. I'm going to be talking about special events coming up. I'm going to be talking about something. That's what my focus is going to be. Join me, have fun, blah, 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 blah. Give them a notice and they're more in tune to probably watch you and watch it happen. Just like when John promotes this show and other shows, he's going to give you a heads up and say, hey, this is what's coming around the corner. And even you can apply that to how you DJ or MC a, a wedding or a corporate event or a holiday party or whatever it might be. You always want to give your guests and give everybody that's there a little bit of a heads up of, of, of what's happening. You know, here in about five minutes, we're going to have the, the grand introduction or whatever else. You don't just jump right into it because you never get people to, to listen to you when you do that. So you have to you have to give them a little bit of a heads up. Uh, this is the second part. The second one, you would think that it would be common knowledge, but it's really not. Don't go live if you don't have a good, strong connection. There's nothing that drives me crazy than... When somebody goes live and you've got one bar of signal service or your Wi-Fi spotty, and then you want people to watch you, but it's sputtering all over the place and yeah. it keeps cutting out and it's just, it's just a pain and it's hard to watch and nobody ever watches it. I mean, cause there, eventually you get to the point where you're like, nah, this isn't fun anymore because mm -hmm. it's jumping all over the place. So make sure you have a, a good, strong connection. Now, one thing that we're going to do when I jump into the app is before you actually go live, you have to write some sort of a description. You're going to write some sort of a catchy phrase, something to grab people's attention. Because when it pops up in their feed, that's the first thing that they're going to see. They're going to see whatever that is that they, that, you know, think about like almost like a, like a micro Twitter. You have 140 characters, probably less than that, to get your point across, to get somebody to watch you. So if you're, if you're really great at elevator, elevator pitches and you're really great at locking people in in a sentence, this is beautiful this is for, you. for you. Yeah. Exactly. If you suck at that, then you need to get better at it because it's the <laughs> only way that you're going to get good at Facebook Live, even if you are a phenomenal rock star in front of a camera and on a microphone. And I'm not going to mention anybody in specific, but it's not me. If you're really, really good at that, then uh, you got to get both sides going on there. Something that I've struggled with, uh, and this is my one, two, three, fourth little thing to, to talk about, is asking for those that are viewing to subscribe to the live notifications. Now, John, you have a, a pretty extensive YouTube background, correct? Correct. So there's that subscribe button, and you're always asking people, hey, subscribe yeah, to my channel. That, yeah. Absolutely. Live has the same thing with the notification. Facebook does track and, and keep kind of a tally, if you will, of those that are that have a lot of people that want notifications versus those that don't. And I have seen not full stats, but I've seen some articles talking about those that have a higher notification rate seem to get more people in, in general. 
uh, Facebook maybe leans towards them just a little bit more. And if you look at any social media outlet and it's the same exact thing. Somebody has 5.7 million followers and they tweet something and it gets retweeted or you know, re-Instagrammed or whatever else, they're gonna lean towards that direction because it's getting more circulation. It's just how the, how the cookie crumbles. So ask them to subscribe to your notifications. You can, you can tell them about it at the tail end of your, of your show or at the beginning or, or whatever else. Um, interact, interact with everybody that is, oh, my thing like went full screen. That was so cool. All right, so sorry, and I'm back, back now with you. Um, say, communicate with those that are watching. Um, I'm doing a horrible job of that right now because I'm not looking at the live video uh, on Facebook whatsoever. I have it pulled up mm -hmm. and I'm going to look at it here momentarily, but that's the biggest thing about going live is that ability to interact with people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I'm going to give you guys some ideas for how to use live here in just a little bit, but I want you to be thinking about the last time or if you've ever gone live on Facebook or even on Periscope or on YouTube, anything. If you've ever gone live before, was it purely a internally based reason why you went live or was it a I want to interact with people that are watching right now if it's purely internal then it's it, it's going to be difficult for you because none of us to my knowledge none of us that are watching this right now probably have the following that like the onion has yeah. if the onion goes live on Facebook everybody just stops what they're doing and they're like oh, the onions going live and it can be something ridiculous like a live birthing of a unicorn. Watch this this live video of a unicorn being born, and people will stop what they're doing. They will tell watch their children it. to go to bed. They will burn the pot roast. They will sit down and say, "I have to watch, watch this, this unicorn, and I can't do anything else until this unicorn is born." Uh, so we don't we don't have that type of a following. So we have to be creative. We have to be organic. We have to be conversational when you do go live. So interact with people. Welcome people. Hey, thanks for showing up, John. Hey, thanks for sticking around, Michael. You know, good to see you guys. And then when they ask questions, you go back and forth. Uh, something that, that we were talking about right before we went live uh, tonight was we noticed that there was a weird little glitch and a little bug in Facebook Live where if you're, uh, if you're, if you're the presenter, we'll just call the, pre that's the presenter. If you're the presenter and you're on your, on your phone and you're going live, for some reason, sometimes comments don't pop up on our end. And it's important to know that if you comment and they don't respond or vice versa, if you're not seeing comments popping up, it might not be because nobody is responding. It might be a technical glitch. And this is still a, a semi new product. Yes. It's, it's, it's pretty fluid, but I mean, cars have been around for, I'm not a car guy, but when was the first car built, John? Do you know? I'm going to put you on the spot. It'd be the 19... early. It would have been the early, uh, and there was some in the 1800s, but I mean, they started really start to really come on in the early 1900s. All right, we'll go with that. So it's been about 100 years, a little over 100 years that cars have been around, and we still don't have a perfect car. We don't have a car that you're going to buy it, and it's going to work perfectly all the time. Technology and the internet is the same exact thing. So Say it ain't so. Uh, you, my Macintosh is always perfect. Uh, oh, don't go there. <laughs> don't. Don't go, don't take that route with me, the the PC lover with the Android mobile systems of everything. <clears throat> I still remember when you messaged me and was like, hey, what's that program that you use to share your share your uh, your 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 tablet screen? I was like, that's an Android only. And I I you didn't even call me, you messaged me, but I could feel the tears streaming down your face because it was an Android only program. That works really, really well, by the it way. It does, yes. And I, I found out Apple has a, a neat way to do that, too. But that's another show for another day. Another oh, yeah. David we'll came that. 1903. Thank you, David. Uh, oh, those, 1903. For those of you wondering, um, we are, again, broadcasting to both YouTube and Facebook tonight. Uh, Facebook, uh, it's showing about 10 people watching on Facebook Live. Hello, and, Facebook people. So thank you guys for joining us. If you guys have any questions or any comments, we're going to be co covering... Uh, we have the YouTube link, which is in the the, uh, the the chat on Facebook Live. You can go up and find the link. That's where most of the comments and most of the discussion are going on tonight. But I most I can watch both now because Facebook changed a few things on how we do live from what we did a month ago. So I can follow along. There we go. I I'm Anderson. excited to hear about what that is, like what the big changes are, because your perspective and having something where you've got a, a YouTube background and integrating that into Facebook is something that I'm still very new to. I don't do that a lot. I still use 
YouTube is primarily a here's my video. I'm going to throw it out there, and then I can I can track everywhere that it's it's going from there. But since you do a plethora, if you don't know what the word plethora you is, you need to look it up. Watch Three Amigos, and you'll learn exactly what the word plethora is. Is that where they used to do that? They yeah. Nice. Hesse, what is what is a plethora? That's there. We so, go. Yeah, there are yeah. Else. You got and I I didn't even know what the word plethora was. Plethora was, but I still laugh, I, and I still laugh now. Yeah, we had a we had an English teacher who loved that word. It's a, it's a great word. It is. It's a hundred dollar word, and you can use it pretty much anywhere and sound smarter, just like that. Just like that, and you can even be talking about a plethora of French fries from McDonald's, and it it works. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not that good. They're no, really not that good. But, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, okay. <laughs> What's your favorite French fry? I don't like eat like if you had to, if you could choose any French fry in the world, what French fry would you choose? I, I don't really eat them anymore. Um probably the one you I you just cut them out of your system altogether? Yeah, yeah, exactly. See, um, that's a smart move. That's yeah, a smart move. They're they're like a, a, a gateway drug for me. Oh, oh I see. I you might be onto something there. Yeah, they you are. might be onto something there. My wife has gotten these like cauliflower, uh, like cauliflower French fries and cauliflower tater tops yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, no, you just just eat the cauliflower. Just eat the. You know, that's uh, that's another show for us when we. <laughs> that's eat, another show. Eating our greens show <laughs> for those of you who who follow or know know a little bit. Uh, that's become a big part of of my life here is is eating much more greens, but. We'll, there you go. We'll go on that. And, and well, and good job. And good job. Uh, okay. So you want to interact with the audience. You also, and this is my biggest struggle, is you want to go live for a while. And what does a while mean? Well, if you look it up, Facebook actually recommends going longer than 10 minutes, but you can't go past 90 minutes. Yep. That's your time frame that you have to work with. If, if you want to get some good interaction and good back and forth and, and good coverage, Plan on going live for about 10 minutes. So if your phone's sitting at 15% and you're in the middle of the cornfield. <laughs> you're not going to do it. Yeah, let's let's just not go live for that event at that specific uh, time and location. But, but even even with that, Jared, I'm only, uh, this is an area that I, I actually do quite a bit with our local paper. There are times when it's still valuable to go live because Facebook has their little algorithms. And there's things mm -hmm. they like more than they like other things. I can write a text post. I can do a upload a video to a post. I can upload some picture, single picture, multiple pictures, and then I can do a live post. When you go and balance all of these out, the ones that get the most love from Facebook is a 10 minute, five minute live video. If I could do you know, record it, put it up, or shoot it live, I shoot it live. So as an example, um, this is yesterday. Uh, for Lori, for the newspaper for Lori, I went to a local church. They were doing a blessing of the the um, uh, groundbreaking ceremony, so I was there with cell phone and shot a few things. Well, that silly little small town local video newspaper video has over two thousand views on it by this morning. Nice. They they can go well, and what's happening is that because of it being live, they're showing that to more people, more of our fans than they would if I'd have just uploaded the video. So mm -hmm. you say that, you know, sometimes a five minute video is may not be the greatest thing in the world, but it has its moments because of I think what you have to do is you have to take a step back and, and think, how is this going to be applicable to the people watching? Mm -hmm. If you're doing it and, and I'll give you some ex examples of topics here in just a second, but one of those topics is a Q and a, if it's an open Q and a, yeah. and you're just, you're purely just going back and forth with somebody or multiple people. If you do a, you know, Oh, we're, we're going to do an ultimate DJ NTV, you know, uh, question a thon, and you're going to bring me, and you're going to bring uh, Michael, and you're going to bring uh, Sherry, and, you know, five or six or seven people. And we're just going to have this massive hour and a half long show where people can jump in, and we just talk about anything and everything. And, you know, it gets a billion views and whatnot. It's going to be really popular for a while because it's right now. It's happening now. This, this is all going back and forth right now. But, and like for with your example, that's something that granted it happened now, but it could be rewatched. Yep. You could you they could somebody could pull that video a year from now and be like, oh yeah, this is this is what happened at this time. This is when this ceremonial thing happened, and the church will probably put it on their website, and people will watch it over and over and over again. You know, if you know that it's going to be rewatchable to that degree, then oh my gosh, yes. Even if it's for a few minutes, that's the way to do it. 
And people now, I don't want to use the word millennials, but people now, whether you're young or you're old, still like to consume bite size. Oh, for sure. They still, they still, whether it's, you know, the White Castle Twitter or they have something else that, you know, a, a, a video, a, a Facebook live video, if it's under five minutes and they know how long it is, they're going to be more inclined to say, ah, I can sit down and watch that for four and a half minutes versus that's 48 minutes long. I don't know if I'm going to sit down and really dedicate that much of my life to sitting here and listening to, you know, Jimbo Jones talk about whatever specialty he, he, uh, he claims to be in. So. Um, when you wrap up your, your Facebook live, <clears throat> let people know that it's done and it's over with something that drives me crazy is when I'm watching something and they're just like, Hey, thanks for coming out. Or they don't even say thanks. They're just, all right, that's our show for the click. And then it just goes down. And I think when you, yeah, go, oh, ahead. go ahead. You, you might that when you hit click that there is a, it, it kind of rolls back. It does a, 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 a film roll for lack of a better mm-hmm. way, best way to describe it. So if you, yeah, talk about that. If you. Oh yeah. So there, when you, once you, once you stop, you got to prepare, like don't go anywhere yet. Don't hit stop and then just put it back in your pocket or whatnot. You're going to, you're actually listening and you want to listen for a ding. I don't know if you hear a ding when you do it or not, John. I'm not sure. I've uh, not this way. We certainly won't, but. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, when you, when you complete it and you hit that stop, it will then give you the option after you hear a ding because the ding is the, okay, Hey, we're done. We're not going live anymore. Um, it'll ask you, hey, do you still want to post this or do you want to delete? So for, through Facebook Live, if you do something and it's like, there's no real purpose for me keeping this on there. This was something that I wanted to keep exclusive to the people that were dedicating themselves to being here. If that ultimate, you know, super show that John's going to put on that has, all, you know, a whole bunch of the DJ and TV uh, personas and whatnot or personalities, they, uh, you could say, hey, this is going to be a one-time viewing only. This is going to be at eight o'clock tomorrow night and after this is over, it's not going to be viewable again. Is it? Is it a wise business move? Maybe. I mean, if you get enough people to tune into that one time, if they know, hey, this isn't going to pop up again. Once this is gone, it's almost like the Snapchat of video. Once this is gone, this is gone. Then after that's uh, that show is over, you can delete it and you can be done with it. If something happens in the background, and you're like, this doesn't represent my brand. This doesn't represent who I am very well. I don't want this to be out there for the entire world to see all the time. If somebody says something in the background that you just don't agree with, you can still have that option to delete it at the very, very end. Um, so did that hit what you were talking about or was there something yep, else that yep. you... And, there, and it's all, that, that end of the video is, is a little bit cumbersome because there's times where when you hit the, okay, you know, hey, this is John Young with the Disc Jockey News. Thank you for watching. And, and if you hit that, the end right away, you almost need to do a, a smile and exhale, then hit end because that does a back roll Oh yeah, yeah. So that's true. So that's why when uh, Jared was mentioning that, uh, you know, if if so, envision I've got I'm I'm doing it and I'm going to as soon as I I do my end I'm going to hit stop finish. So you know John Young with the Disc Jockey News. Thank you. Boom! I hit that. Okay. The way you would, would you would see is you would hear you know Hey, this is John Young with the Disc Jockey News. Thanks for because it comes back in about two seconds in. So I need to go when I'm doing my video and ending it. It's John Young with the you know Disc Jockey News. Thanks for watching. Click, and that way it will get have the complete end where it isn't that abrupt stop. You got to. I wonder. I I wonder if we're gonna do that at the end of our show tonight. Like, if we're just gonna end it, or if we're gonna be like. But the you know, we're doing it a little differently because we're running everything through software, whereas we're not true. coming from a mobile device. We're going through Wirecast, which you, there's OBS, which is a free version of this. Uh, Wirecast is a paid version. And we're streaming it to do so. We will have our clothes, so we'll end up with the, the 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 closing things and that rolls through. So it's a little bit easier. Yes. Uh, I still want us to sigh. I want us to. I want to do yeah, a we'll, buy sigh. We'll hey, hey, take it easy. Have a good one. <sighs> we'll, yeah, we'll get that. We'll, okay, that's that's how we're gonna end. <laughs> you better not forget. Uh, we People a, that are watching, you better keep. We got a couple of questions that have come oh, up. Oh yeah, here, yeah, so yeah. It's, uh, um, question time. Uh, we need I, a jingle for question time. Best. Yeah, we do. We need something. Google Keep. Of course, I just had had someone send a Facebook thing, so we just got the Facebook doing doing, which you probably <laughs> won't. <laughs> um, uh, Mike Anderson uh, was was with us tonight. Thanks, Mike, for joining us. I uh, was wondering what the type type of content is the best for Facebook Live, and you were mentioning question and answer uh, earlier, which is certainly something. And and I want to I want to kind of before we get into actual type of content, is yeah. when you're doing a Facebook Live or any live stream like that. 
but really the Facebook Live is, is more noticeable, is when you first start that, you don't have an audience yet. And in mm. that particular case, it, you are addressing people who are watching it later. So when I'm doing a video for for a local thing and it wasn't scheduled, it was just something that there's a fire. Oh my gosh, here I am. Well, in that beginning part, I'm now addressing people who are watching it anywhere from, you know, half hour to an hour later, days later, that I can say, hey, this is, you know, the date and I'm I'm at this location and I'm because I'm not talking to live viewers. And then as the viewers come in, then I can start to change it from being a talking about it as a, you know, a past event and giving them the background because now the viewers are are coming in and I can be talking and saying, you know, hey, Jim, hey, Mike, hey, Reggie, uh, thanks you guys for joining. This is what's going on. If you guys have any questions, we can deal with that. So if you're doing content, mm -hmm. that's a, a great way to start it out because Jim mentioned that, uh, you know, his his video, his max time is two minutes and then he becomes embarrassed with viewership. Yeah, it it's slow at first, really slow. Um, it's just, there was, oh, who is it? Uh, I think it might've been Bill Herman. He, I, forgive me if it's not you, Bill, I apologize, but I, I thought it was you, but he had mentioned something about the power of silence, Yes. about yes. how he talks about you that. could, you could literally grab the microphone, walk out to the middle of the day. And I've tried this and it's the scariest thing in the world, man. And I've been doing this for a while and I've, I've tried it. I've grabbed the microphone. I've walked out to the dance floor and just stood there and just kind of looked around and waited for people to realize that something was getting ready to happen. Um, you don't want to do the same thing, but you have to be able to allow those that are, are watching to a certain degree that, you know, you gotta, you gotta have some, some give and take with it. You don't, if you force too much blah and gibberish, you're going to disconnect with people really quickly. Very quickly. And it's, it's a really hard balance to find. And that's why one of my first points was tell people before you go live. Yeah. If you're just going to throw something up there, if you're at a wedding or whatever else and you found this, the, the, you got done setting up and nobody's there yet and you want to do a walk around of the venue and showcase what the venue looks like and you know this is only going to be five minutes or whatnot, but it's going to be a great behind the scenes type of a thing, another topic I'll talk about here in a second, then you, know, you might not want to wait all that long because you're planning on letting this go for a while anyways. Now, if you have something else like a Q&A where you want people to come in and you want people to attend and they've known about it for a while. You know, if you only have four or five people in there and you have one question pop up, roll with that one question, prelude with whatever questions are coming through with stuff that's going on or places that you're going to be or anything in between people, especially brides and grooms. They always ask me, Hey, can I come out and see you at a wedding beforehand? And I always tell them, no, you can't. I'm sorry. That's, that's not how this process works. You can't visit me at somebody's private event, just like you don't want anybody showing up at your private event. And they, they always get it. They totally understand. But you could let people know, hey, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be down at, Sof like last night, I'm gonna, I was down at Sophia's. It's a, it's a bridal gown and tuck shop. And they did a bridal cocktail hour. It's not a bridal show. It was very laid back. We, we were able to, 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 to chit chat with everybody one-on-one. -on -one, but I was able to tell people about it way in advance. So the live videos that I did do, I would let them know, hey, you know, if you're thinking about doing something next Tuesday or whatever, this is where I'm going to be at. If you want to stop by and hang out and chit chat, give them information about what's going on with you or within your company. And you can still make the information about per pertinent to your company, but also make it personal. Uh, I love talking about my kids. Um, all of my clients know who my kids are. Mm -hmm. So I might talk about something there. Heck, my kids might actually jump on a live video at some point in time. There's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that. My, my personal philosophy is that whenever you go live, you're giving somebody a special insight into your life, yeah. whether it's a business or whether it's personal. So if I try to fake how I'm going to be on here, I'm going to have to try to fake that all the time. And I'd rather just be myself. I'd rather be exactly like I'm talking to you guys right now with all my clients as well when they tune in and watch. And if my three-year-old daughter runs up and, you know, mm -hmm. tells me that she spilled milk or whatever, then it's like, hey, guess what, everybody? We I'll be back in about three minutes. So talk amongst yourself or whatever. And then and then it happens. So being natural, being organic is is very, very key. Um, I think the beginning part of the question he was talking about, like, what are some different ideas? Uh, yeah, t types of the types of content. I think you made it, you, you, the point you're, you're going with this is, is in that, 
in the videos that I do with on Facebook Live that aren't like this, where it's a simulcast, I try to do more of a behind the scenes, and that's mm-hmm. exactly what you're referring to. Whereas it's it's more that informal, you know, hey, you know, come on over here, let's go, let me show you over here, let me show you this. Whereas many yep. of our YouTube videos, we we have done that on some of those, but it's just a different feel. In yeah. That, in that way, it's kind of like you know the the you know LinkedIn that we feel with this a more professional area. And we yeah. can go to some other social media and be a little bit more this. And then we can go to Snapchat and we can, you know, show pictures of, of monkey junk. You know, we can do whatever we need to do. Each <laughs> one has got their little bit different flavor when it comes to that. And I, I, I found in the the Facebook world that behind the scenes or, you know, I'm again with the newspaper, I've been doing a lot of that with the lo- the local newspaper. I'm somewhere and it's like, hey, this is going on and I can pop up and do this. And people just really... They get they get excited about those things and there's shares and and comments and engagement. Yep. It's, it's fabulous. Yep. So that that's a couple of them that I had written down. Um, Q and A, which we talked about a couple of different times already. Uh, behind the scenes, which you just hit on a, a little bit. And there's a few other ones that I've got that that I thought I'd give you guys. Uh, this is by no means an exclusive list. Uh, this is just a few things that that I've seen and I've I've liked a lot. Uh, hot topics. Uh, hot topics are, are things that are going on in the news, stuff that might be pertinent to your company, to your business, to whatever's happening, and you want to get on and maybe talk to people about it. I mean, everybody, when the United thing went down, eh, social media just, yeah. everybody was freaking out about it. And you, if you're a traveling DJ, if you travel frequently and you fly frequently, guess what? Your opinion would be phenomenal on a Facebook Live. If you threw that up, and I'm trying to think of, of a few people. I think Jason, Jason Janney. Um, yep. Oh, Jani, I'm sorry. Yep. Um, Jason travels quite a bit. He does. Yep. So if, if he had his viewpoint on, hey, this is what I'm thinking about this whole situation, you probably would get some views because it's a hot topic right then and there. Uh, to go along with that breaking news of stuff that's happening and you just want to pass, like what you did with the, with the, with the, uh, with the church, yeah. you know, that's something that's, that's instant, that's big, it's happening right there. One that I want to start doing, there's two that I want to start doing more, and this is one of them, uh, is interviewing, pulling people in, very similar to what this is, but sitting in the same room, having more of an intimate conversation about, hey, this is such and such, when I do, when I go to venues, this is, I started doing this last year, when I started going to venues, I would get my stuff set up, I would change my clothes, and then I would do an interview with the venue coordinator. And I would give her the ability, hey, walk this, give me a tour of the venue. And we would walk the entire venue. And sometimes it was three minutes and sometimes it was 10 minutes. It doesn't really matter, but it's something different. It's something new. Somebody might have been interested in that venue and they're getting a behind the scenes interview-ish type of a view. That's that's all good. That's always fun to do. Uh, I'd be okay with bringing people into my office too and sitting down and then just having a conversation back and forth of whatever it is that we want to talk about. Right. Something that I really want to do, and I haven't been able to figure out how to do it yet, is doing like a like a, a watch with or a interacting with somebody else. And what I mean by that is, you uh, do you remember Mystery Science Theater three thousand? Oh yeah. Oh, if you don't know Mystery, if you don't know MST three thousand, you need to go and 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 just YouTube it after the show's over. Wait till the show's over and then you go do that. But it's a it was a great show, way ahead of its time. But they would take classic not even five. They would take movies. B very, rated or worse movies. Very B and C movies, just bad graphics. It was like, like layers below Doctor Who. And I like Doctor Who, but it was really, really cheesy stuff. And they would, they would do what everybody does when they watch bad movies is they would joke about it and they would talk about it while the movie was playing. And, and I think that would be amazing as a Facebook live type of a thing. If you could figure out the right way to do it, you could you could talk about a show. You could talk a, in the music industry. If you found like a performance from somebody or a whole set from a live musician, if I'm trying to think of a few things that happened, um, but if if uh, what, what was her name, uh, Jessica Simpson Simpson's uh, sister, she had that lip seek fail on Saturday Night Ashley. Live. Ashley Simpson, that's right. Imagine how social media would have uh, would have taken that, and you could do a, a Facebook Live video of basically that that thing happening, and then you just giving commentary about 
This is what I think right here and right here and right here and whatever else. You know what I would watch? Like no joke what I would watch is I would I would do like a Mystery Science Theater 3000 type of a thing with Ben Stowe over <laughs> but 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 for productions. So like like you 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 talk about your favorite visual like uh, a performance from U2 or from you know whoever and then watch it and listen to Ben talk about, oh, th they did this here, and oh, I see that, and oh, this is something that they did with this or that or whatever else. I think that would be really cool, just to kind of get the inside of, because you know he would do that if oh, he was yeah. watching it anyways. We all do that when we go to venues. We just went and, and saw uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway live, and it was this, it was the most simple thing, four stools, microphones, a piano, and that was it. But I was looking around at everything else and absorbing it where their speaker placement was and how the sound was horrible because X, Y, and Z things were happening. But I, I would probably watch something like that and I would interact with that as well. Um, you could also do a performance and this is kind of where it teeters and I wanted to find out your your thoughts on this, John, is uh, I, a lot of DJs kind of get that, that massive red ding when they are doing a live video and yes. there's music playing in the, uh, in the background. Yep. So, what what is your viewpoint or what, are, what is your thought process on 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 that whole aspect of it with that that with, with us being in the music industry even though we don't create the music we're playing the music should we you know is it right for us to not be able to post you know there's people having a good time and dancing there's 500 people right here and they're just going crazy and it's facebook live and then you get done with that live and facebook's like blink we're sorry, you cannot post this because it has copyrighted material. Yeah, not only that, but I mean, there are people who have had their their channel or their uh, account frozen for a period of time because of that. So, uh, my my thought is, it's just it's not worth it. We don't uh, we don't mess around with it. When we do live music shows, we do them through, via the Zoom webinar, and we will run it to YouTube uh, because YouTube is generally what they will do is they'll just. We can we can stream it through YouTube, and you guys will be able to watch a live music mixing show on our YouTube channel. And then as soon as they're done, they're like, "Oh, you naughty boys! We're going to shut that video off, and make it inaccessible to the rest of the world because of copyright music." And they don't ding us or penalize it because we, penalize us because we do it so infrequently. And then click, we delete it, and Facebook is or excuse me, YouTube's happy. Facebook, I have not messed around. We did a couple of music shows early, and nothing ever happened, and they were never uh, tagged. Mm -hmm. but I've got friends who have had issues and I maybe even a couple in the, in the chat room have had issues when they've been trying to stream. Of course, they're talking venison and deer meat right now, but it, I think a couple <laughs> of them have had issues <laughs> where they've done videos from shows and there's been music and such, and it, they've uh, lost, uh, lost their ability. Their channel was put on a, a hold, freeze, pause, what have you. Yeah. As I was thinking, as I was listening to you explain that, I kind of had this weird epiphany that Facebook is, is I almost feel like it's the, it's designed for the here and now interaction and YouTube is designed for the long-term game. Very much so so. Very Facebook much. I feel is like checkers and then YouTube is chess. That's where you can post it. You can share it. You can really get into the analytics of where it's at, how many people have seen it, what's going on with it. Facebook is, you want to interact with somebody now and get them now, this is the way to go about it. If you want to do something for the long term, YouTube is the way to do it. Very much so. And even even when we have the same videos, you, for those of you watching it on, on Facebook, this video will stay up. And what will happen is is it will just move down, down the feed, and it's gone. In two days, the only way anyone will remember it is if they happen to see a, uh, an ad, if we'd create an ad for the thing. Otherwise, it's gone for all practical purposes. Mm -hmm. Whereas yep. on YouTube, it is out there and it's searchable and people will, you know, somebody will be like, oh, Facebook Live, you know, DJ Facebook Live, and boom, this will pop up as one of the options. Yeah. Uh, the last little one that I had was uh, demonstrations. Yeah. People will always watch demonstrations of what's going on and it could be something, it could be something as simple as, hey, this is a, this is a set, this is my normal uh, system setup. And then you do the, uh, a walk around of this is how it works and this is how it happens. Um, if you want to take it to the next level and you want to kind of show off your skills a little bit more, you can show, hey, this is how I mix music. You don't have to go into the super details, but you could easily you could easily show in a Facebook Live video, this is how I go from one song to the next, or here's, here's, here's how my mindset works for lining up three or four songs. This is how I process it. This is how I work through it. Uh, a lot of DJs that I know don't, make their entire playlist before they show up. There's 
emotion and there's energy that you have to work with the night of. I'm a big advocate on saying that a, that a great dance floor is one third the VIPs, bride and groom, guest of honor, whoever it might be, one third your guest requests, and one third what the DJ knows is going to work. Mm-hmm. And if you have that and a perfect balance, you're going to get an Oreo cookie. And everybody loves Oreos because they're delicious. Yeah. Of course. So, I mean, that's like God's food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised Jesus. Didn't, didn't you go all green? Aren't you like a all veggie now? Is there I, a veggie? It doesn't, doesn't mean you can't look longingly with puppy eyes <laughs> and cry <laughs> as you walk away. <laughs> I will be with you soon, Oreo. I am so sorry I can't be here with you now. Uh, so there's a few ideas. Yeah. Uh, again, be creative. That's the big thing. Be as creative as you possibly can. And it could be. It could sound dumb in theory, but then it. It just works phenomenal. I'm talking about the freaking giraffe that everybody is watching. And did it, did it give birth yet? I don't know. I I, I, I just remember talking about it. I never paid attention to it. I want to say that the giraffe's name was April. And, it, and everybody yeah, thought that it was like an April Fool's joke. And I don't know if it has yet or not, but people will watch it. Oh, yeah, I remember. People too. will watch it. Uh, and it's not like just a few people. Thousands upon thousands of people will watch this giraffe walk around and do absolutely nothing. People will watch videos of, you know, dogs barking for hours upon hours upon hours. I'm sure you can figure out something that's going to grab the attention of some of the people that are that are subscribed to your, your page or a fan of your page. Um, so if you're not going to use your phone or you're not going to use your tablet or your, or your, or your laptop, uh, well, I'm sorry, if you're not using your phone or your tablet, you can use software. Uh, John, you said earlier, what software do you use? We are using, uh, tonight we're using Wirecast. Uh, there's different versions. There's Wirecast Play. That is about $4.95. It's a little expensive. That can do most everything. We use Wirecast Pro because we can do some additional things. Uh, specifically, we can have multiple outputs. So we could be uh, sending this out to YouTube, to Facebook. We could send it out to Ustream. Uh, you know, there's different, we can have multiple and that's, that's a benefit. Uh, there's OBS, which is a free, yep. and I, I think you've used that one. I do. Yep. That's the service that I use. Yeah. I don't, I don't do as much as you do. So it makes sense that you would have a higher end pro or system than, than OBS, but OBS is pretty straightforward. It's, there's not a lot of bells and whistles. It's, 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 it, it works for what it needs to do, which is take your stream or take your, your feed. that's coming in through your camera and then throwing it out to wherever it needs to go to. Yeah, and it, it um, works, works. There's another one called Grabio. Okay, I, I haven't done too much uh, searching into it. That's one that Facebook re- recommends. If you if you actually look up Facebook recommended software, Facebook Live or whatever, uh, OBS, uh, Grabio, and uh, what was yours? Wirecast. Wirecast. I want to say LimeWire, and that's totally not the same <laughs> that thing a different, whatsoever. That's a different word. So, very different program that you should not download. That no, nobody's, no. I don't even think LimeWire is around anymore. I, I think it was uh, shut down and those people were taken out and killed, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. Oh, wow. So so just a minor infraction. Yeah, it's just a, yeah, Wonderful. Just, they, they, <laughs> we got a present for you all back. Yeah. Um, you Minnesota people are really rough. Yeah, it is. It is. It's rough, you know, but that's because the cold, the cold weather, you know, it just toughens us up. Now, if you want to get creative with your hardware... Uh, we talked a little bit last week off the live show about a, a device called a Mevo, M-E-V-O, and that looks really, really cool. It is a little bit pricey. I'm going to say that it's somewhere in like the three to four hundred dollar yeah. range, but you can control it with your cell phone, and it can pan back and forth. It can zoom in and zoom out. It can do all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, of course, you can just use your webcam. Um, you can hook up like a digital DSLR camera. Um, the other thing that I found really cool was you can use a drone, like a yeah. DJI Phantom, and stream from the Phantom to your Facebook Live. So if you have a an outdoor wedding or whatnot, or an outdoor event, and you have a you have a drone sitting there, and you're like, this party is off the hook, because they say that now. They, they do. I think that, the kids right? the kids do say that. Yes. I'm I'm for shizzle. Yeah. You're, right. You're, yeah. You're right there. You. Are. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not at all. I'm not, I'm not at all. Sad, I'm doing a. We're sad and old. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I'm so depressed now. I can't even keep moving on. Uh, no, but I would, I would do that. I would totally get a phantom. Uh, I would get a phantom drone and then just cool, do cool like over overview shots and just let it sit there and kind of rotate around and, and watch people dance for a while. 
that'd be that would be awesome yeah. or do like an overview for the uh, for the venue and then share it to the venues page and then the venues like oh, thank you so much and then they start sharing it and then that's how really cool stuff starts happening kind of like that yeah and the, the drone the drone area is, is a definitely a neat area we use that with the local newspaper also obviously ah. it's weather dependent because if you have a windy day drone footage is whoosh, but <laughs> it's blown away yeah, just, yeah. It, it it's just can't. Away. And it, granted, those gimbals on those are very, very good. But sometimes the wind is just a little bit more. I think we can handle up to about an 18 to 20 mile an hour wind. My teenager is a very good pilot with that. I didn't what, realize. What type a, of drone do you have? Uh, we've got a uh, DJI. Uh, we've got the uh, Phantom 3 Pro. Oh, nice. So it, it again, does a fabulous job. He's actually, today, he was out uh, doing, he just does uh, video work, or I should say photography work for some real estate companies. So oh, yeah. here's my, my, uh, you know, 15 year old who's out with his side job of aerial photography or drone photography. You guys got to meet, uh, Brandon. This is Brand That was Brandon who, uh, the fiver. Yeah. 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 So that's where he was at today doing a so, little entrepreneur. He is. He definitely is. Way to go. Way to go, dad. Uh, All right. 360. Oh, you missed 360 live streaming. Oh, 360. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of other ones out there. Oh yeah, there's so many. But that that one that's actually the kind of a cool a cool little one, especially if you're using like the um, Theta. I've got the little Theta camera, and you can set that up, and and people can watch the thing live, and that's really kind of cool. Like at a press conference, is you can have that going, and the press conference get boring, and then people can swipe and watch the people in the back row pick their nose. It's always exciting to watch the back row pick their nose. I don't know why, but. We had one live stream uh, that was a 360 that we, we were involved with, and that's where everyone was talking about the back row because no one thinks that they're on film back there, but you are. Oh, no. Yeah, everyone's thinking, oh, it's out there. Yeah, uh, who is it? Jeremy Breck? I think he has a 360 camera that he's doing a lot a lot of stuff with. Yeah, yeah quite a few. Uh, we need to do that at, at Midwest DJs Live. We we'll, need to do something. We'll bring, I'll bring the camera with, and we'll we'll have some fun. We yes, absolutely. We put the 360 on the drone. Okay, and then we just fly it all over. I've got some more. I lined up a few more questions here lined up. Oh sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so we were talking a little bit about this uh, successful getting an audience for the Facebook Live. Uh, one of the cool features that Facebook, I don't know if it's, I don't have it on mine, is you can start to schedule Facebook yeah. Live sessions, and I don't know if you've seen that yet, but I haven't seen how to do that yet. But I yep. heard it's out. Yep. So there's a, there's a few different features. Um, there's two that I can think of off the top of my head that I know. So Facebook has this, his, it's not really secret, but they play towards the people that bring in a lot of views. So the celebrities, the politicians, the people that are going to instantly pull in 25,000 viewers. So they have a, another service called Facebook mentions. Yes. And Facebook mentions is purely designed. I'm just going to use the term celebrities. If you're a celebrity, you're probably going to have a Facebook mention. It basically validifies and solidifies. I don't know if those are two real words. Solidifies. They are now. Solidifies. Okay. We it just, and you know where I'm going with it. And it's got to be true. It's real. And I'm going to trademark both of them. Yep. So, um, but it's designed for celebrities. And as it stands right now, new stuff like that rolls up to them before anybody else. So us lowly people that only have a few hundred or a few thousand followers, it, we're not going to see it anytime soon. They want to let them not necessarily beta test it and run through with it. They just, they get that advantageous or the, uh, the, uh, they want to make it cool and yeah. and having the cool people play with it before the nerds like us play with it is awesome. Exactly. So that is one feature that I know has been out for a while. Uh, there is a, uh, there's a group called social media examiner. I think social media examiner.com. They yep. have a good Facebook, uh, uh, following and they have stuff on there you can start scheduling your Facebook live events. Um, and it's one Facebook is, is notorious for basically giving you something, but you don't know it. So you can check your settings if you want to, and you might have it by some happenstance luck type of a thing. Um, when they were rolling out the, the update for the mobile for Facebook, where you can have a colored background and then just text. I don't know how, but I got it really early. Yeah. Cause you're on a drone. Yeah. That, well, that's true. That's very, very true. Yeah. And they sent me a jet. They and, sent me a brand new jet and gave me access to that because I'm on an Android. Yeah, and so. I'm on an iPhone, and it's like I got squat. I mean, yeah. I got a, a, a well, they charge you more. A paper bag on the steps, full of Facebook doo doo, and that's and it was on fire. Yeah, that's what I got. But that, that's 
that's more than what other people got. Some people only got the flaming Facebook poo. Yours was actually in a bag. Yeah, yeah, so that, yeah. I had that the question. people that were using Windows phones just got the poo <laughs> on fire. You at least got the bag, so it protected you. Just a just a teeny tiny amount. And the Blackberry um, people, the poor. <laughs> oh man, you don't even want to know what they did. It was horrible. It was horrible. Let's put it this way, it wasn't solid poo. Ah, <laughs> I think they Facebook live that yeah. they, uh, as they were delivering that, they were like, we got to live this man. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's do this. Um, so yes. So that is one service that is coming around the corner. It's it, again, it's not when they finally officially release it, you'll see, you'll see it happen and, and you'll definitely know, but it's not to everybody right now. It is still in the early beta or not early beta, but it's still in the slow release process. That's why I'm saying, Tell people beforehand. Let people know that you're going to do something. A pretty cool workaround, if you want to use it for right now, is in your in your business profile on your Facebook page. You can set up an event, and you can oh, just yeah. say, Could "Here's the that. event. I'm going to go Facebook Live at this time," and then people can say, "Oh, I'm interested," or "Yeah, I'm going to be there," or whatever else. And then I think you can still do it, but you can message people that are going to be going to that event. Yes. And throw your link to hey, this is my uh, my direct URL link for the Facebook Live video, blam, and then it goes out to everybody right there. That's that's a that's a quick workaround. That again, it's a few extra steps, but you'll get the the, the program in here soon. The other one that John and I talked about last week after the show was over was the ability to uh, basically do what we're doing right now, but without having to use an outside service. So having two people have an interview through Facebook Live, but it's within Facebook Live as well. So you don't have to go outside of the worldwide web of Facebook to and use some other software. I could just say, hey, John, let's do a Facebook Live thing. I'm on my phone. You're on your phone. Cool. Not a problem whatsoever. Blam. We're both on there. Hey, this is Jared and John. We're here at Midwest DJs Live. Uh, I'm over here. John's over there. We're both, we're going to, we're going to play a little game. We're going to have a competition to see how many people we can get to come to our side of the room or our side of the building or whatever else. Um, that would be phenomenal if we could do that by, by Midwest. I don't know if that's going to work or not, but uh, we're going to give it a shot and we'll, and we'll see. But that is coming around the corner as well. I'm not even seeing that hit some of the the bigger the bigger names as of right now. It's still very early. I would classify that as a as a beta project. Yeah, I think um, that's good. I'm I'm, I'm I, but it's 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 coming. They know people want it. It's just not here yet. Yeah. Um, let's see. Next question because they were talking about the audience. Um, I think the scheduling and we pretty much hit that one. Okay. Um, somebody he was asking about uploading the uh, videos, Facebook Live videos to YouTube. Should you do that? I, my answer on that is depends. I, I wanted to do a Ben still there. It depends. <laughs> I, I, I do it, I, maybe I need to be a little more serious. It depends. There we go. That, that worked better. It felt better. It felt, channeled the Ben still. You locked eyes with the camera and everything. Yeah. It was good. I, it was very stoic. I, I liked I, it. I wanted to make sure that we got that across. Uh, the idea, there's going to be some of the videos, <laughs> such as the church video that we've been mm. talking about. That one I did. I pulled it down. If you If you do a search for... For a Facebook download, that will get, pop you to a website that will allow you to download videos once you've got the URL. And it's a little trick to get the URL for your videos sometimes, but it is possible to do. Enter that, download the high def, upload it to YouTube, because as Jared said earlier, Facebook is kind of more of the, the today, where YouTube is there for a long period of time. Unless you're going to pin the video to the top, but even that, it's still a window. It might be a month, it might be two months, but it's not going to be there in two years. Whereas a video, like I would say, if I do a walk around in a venue, like Jared was talking about and do that kind of a thing, I'm going to want that to be up there for probably 18 months because the, that video will probably be applicable for at least that long. So yeah. that becomes a YouTube thing. Yep. I, I personally don't, uh, but I just started doing Facebook live about a year ago. You've been running your YouTube, uh, uh, show in station for much longer than that. So you've got, significantly more videos than, than I do. But the more that I start doing, especially when you walk throughs or, you know, coffee talk with a photographer or whatever, whatever it might be that I happen to do through Facebook live, I'll probably start playing them. I'll pull them. If nothing else, even if you don't do anything with it, if you leave it on Facebook and you don't do anything with it, if anything happens to Facebook, it's gone. Yeah. So take the time to download it, 
keep it on a hard drive. If you want to throw it on a YouTube and then keep it private and keep it, you know, locked away until you're ready to use it somewhere, do it, go for it. If nothing else, it'll be available and be viewable there. And then you'll be able to, to revisit it again down the road at some other point in time. Uh, I know that on my website, I, my website, I, I use Squarespace. And in order for me to put videos on my website, it has to be hosted elsewhere. It has to be on YouTube or Vimeo or some other hosting site that, that the video can, can generate a player and then I can put it on my website. Um, I need to start doing that more. I'm, I'm very vocal and very open about it. I, I don't do as, as, as well of a job updating my videos on my website as I probably should. So uh, again, you know, to, to each their own. Do I do it right now? No. Am I going to? Yes. I'm going to download them. I'm going to put them on YouTube. That way I have more control. And then if something happens to Facebook, I still, I still own that video. Right. I can say, no, this is mine. If you want to delete that or you want to do something like weird and, and creepy Facebook, go for it. But this video right here, this is mine. Yeah, Broland's mentioned uh, the, that using YouTube as a free video cloud storage area. We we were just talking about that with our children. They're in pl the play, and you want to record that. But it's like, okay, if I re shoot this in 4K, it takes a gazillion uh, you know gigs to do do this whole thing. But mm -hmm. I can upload that whole thing. It'll take a time, but I bring it in, edit the video, and upload that whole big two-hour play to YouTube. And it stays there as a 4K video, and it's like you know, it can just sit there. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then if you move, if you change websites, if you change anything around, it's still right there. Uh, yeah, it's, exactly. YouTube's not going anywhere. YouTube, I, I am more confident that YouTube is not going anywhere more than Facebook. I think Facebook will drop away before YouTube will go. Anywhere. I would think so. Also, if that comes, and he, and we know how big Facebook and what a, a Goliath it's become, but it's a small, oh, it's a small, small Goliath compared to a big Goliath. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so we got that. Good, good, good. Uh, DJ's grabbing coffee and talking about music. I think that would be a fabulous morning session at Midwest DJ's Live. Yeah. DJ and TV grabbing coffee, talking music in the morning. I'll I'll bring I'll bring the rolls. We'll figure find coffee. There's our shows Monday and Tuesday morning at at Midwest DJ's Live. David, thank you for the idea. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to do it in 360 so that we can, we can, you guys can scroll, scroll around the room and see who is itching themselves inappropriately. Yeah. Do it on, do it on a round table and call it like uh, DJs at the round table. And then everybody will just sit around and then, and then we can, we can all be on camera and then people can just pan around and see whoever they want to see. Or, yeah. Or if you have it set up properly with the virtual reality on your cell phone, you got the little glasses thing, you could put that on in a chair, a swivel chair, and you could just go. Yeah. How awesome would that be? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that even if I'm on the show. <laughs> I'm still going to put on an Oculus Rift and I'm just going to, you're going to, you're going to pan around. You're going to see, oh, there's Bill Herman and oh, there's John Young and there's, J what's Jared doing? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> this is amazing. Look, there's John. He's right there. <laughs> you're pointing yeah, to John, the, you're right there. That's you're pretty pointing cool. to the wall on the back side of the room. <laughs> he's right there. No, I see him. No. It's so creepy. It's like he's right here next to me. Oh, fun. Funny, funny, funny. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so Facebook, Facebook Live. Sometimes when you're doing things remotely at an event, microphones can be an issue. Mm, yeah. And and our, our, while our phones and the tablets and depending upon how you have, you know, which ones you're using, they, sometimes you can select front or back as, or the mics go with the camera. Uh, don't have, I don't have any of them here because I was using them. I was using them in the other shed because I was recording for the uh, weekend handyman. Uh, my personal favorites are Rode microphones. I just have had a really good, good luck with Rode uh, microphones. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're a little ex expensive. There's one that is a little, and I thought that I had, I thought I had that that uh, the box here, but I've talked about this on a show. It's a little it's a little a microphone that is meant for the iPhone or it works with the, any any mobile device. It's a tip ring ring sleeve, but it's a little shotgun mic about three to four inches long, and it works wonderfully. You plug it in and you aim it towards yourself, and it has a little eighth inch jack out for listening and being able to like for Zoom. Um, I would be able to listen to Jared, and then the shotgun mic would pick me up, and it works really really quite well. I'm actually having a second one. Uh, I ordered a second one the other day. That is a, a neat thing if you need to have two-way communication like for our Zoom things. For Facebook Live, it still works well because it's picking up me and it's say if Jared and I were talking, yay. 
going to, uh, when I'm doing these things, such as uh, when the church was, on, or not the church, when when half of the town of Melrose was on fire, and I knew if I were, because of all the different uh, emergency trucks and things, I couldn't use the cell phone microphones because it would have picked up everything. So I had the Rode, a little lapel microphone, which is a, about a $70 lapel. I've I've gotten companies because they've seen my reviews on the road. I have had six of the cheaper ones sent out to me to use and try. None of the six have died or have lasted more than probably two or three times of use. These are the twenty dollars oh, wow. ones. They've just they just haven't haven't lasted for me yet. The road I have had one road die on me because I had it in the um, when I'm done recording, I just put it in its bag and put it in my uh, pocket of my shirt, mm-hmm. and I happened to throw my shirt in the laundry. <laughs> didn't take the mic out that was one of the cleanest microphones when it came out but it was it was oh dead. yeah well when you give the road a ride it it doesn't come back no no you give it a ride and the big the big swirly is that the uh the road uh video mic me yes it's it's got it, it looks it kind of when you look at you know, when you look at it it looks like a it looks like a gun because the the microphone comes out like a like like this like a microphone like this and then down here at the bottom is where your eighth inch jack is uh, and it comes it, out the back actually oh it comes out the back yeah okay I'm, the one that i was looking at is called the road video mic me directional microphone and it's about 60 bucks yeah, um, yeah. but i've 60 i've heard i've heard of some good things about this I'm it gonna, works on everything except for the iphone 7 yes because it doesn't have the right the right uh, wah, wah, wah. and they do have some microphones that are are i've, I've played with a couple um i actually did a a video that was a, a microphone that was for the iPhone 7, which will also work because it's using the lightning port. Mm. And it was um, from Zoom. Oh, cool. And it should be a good mic. We used this when I was doing the the testing of or the demo videos for the uh, PV speakers. We had the dark matter speakers that came in. So I'm using it for that. And it was it sounded great. And then all of a sudden it starts picking up this... Zzz, zzz. It's like, well, why, huh? why is it, it... There was this weird electrical buzz, anomaly noise coming on. I, so what, did you find out what it was? I have no idea what it was. I couldn't. I I couldn't. Um, couldn't figure that out. Oh yes, yeah, so it is the Rode Video Mic Emmy. That's the one that I use, and it's got that. Uh, it does look like a little pistol. But yeah, it the in the back is where the uh, headphone jack is. What you're seeing with that little thing that comes down by the plug. That's where you plug it into the actual that, phone. Yeah, the, you got the part that goes into the phone, and then the other part of it, it just basically comes and snugs up against the phone to keep it from uh, being sloppy. Yeah, moving around. And then the smart, that, the smart lav, uh, smart lav plus is what I like to. Uh, that's that's my go-to that I use when I'm wa- doing the walk around at the different DJ conventions. The smart lav plus is my my preferred lav mic. Those, but those are the two I use. Nice. That's the. Yeah, I've been looking at those for a while, and I haven't taken the plunge, but now I feel like I need to. Uh, let's see. Let's. I'm just doing. Let's see. You're good. You're solid. Uh, brides, what do they want to see in live video? See, in using using live video for wedding, it's it's a tougher world. And I've had a few conversations with bride because I we do so much live video, we can I mean we can stream their whole day if we if they have guests and family and such. And I've got some that are like, oh, that's a neat idea, but I don't have anyone. Everyone's going to be there. Okay, great, wonderful for you. And then I have some people who are like, well, I have family, but gosh, I don't know if I want to put this private event out on the internet. Well, we can you know basically have it behind. You know, and not passwords, but you know, have URLs that are shared, and it's it's a private share or an unlisted share, and it's no one's going to see it. I mean, heck, we we do shows, and no one sees our shows. So, I mean, it's it's not like everyone's looking and are going to be stealing. But yeah, you know, I I actually encourage people not to do uh, like a Facebook Live for their wedding. Now, if they have somebody, and and the, and the main reason why is one it's going to cut out after 90, 90 minutes. Yep. So I don't want to have to keep walking back over there and restarting this thing up over and over again. But normally they only consider it when they have somebody that can't be there. Yep. And in that circumstance, I would say, no, let's just do a Skype. Let's yep. just do something that's direct one-on-one. Do a Google Hangout. If you have a few people that want to watch, do a Google Hangout, share it with all of them. And then the people that want to join and come in, then that's that's totally different. But I would... This is just me, but I wouldn't do I wouldn't do a Facebook Live for I wouldn't a either. No, no, I would use if I did anything, it would be a YouTube where I could schedule it mm-hmm. and unlisted, send them the link to that that uh, broadcast because with YouTube we can go. I mean, we went, we we've gone hours. I mean, we've gone six hours with a live stream. It can mm-hmm. be done if needed to. 
And yeah. I, that would easily be the route I would go to uh, to do that. Um, yep. I think that might be about it. I don't know. Oh, it, it, off the hook is is no. They don't no longer say that now. It's lit. Thank you. Oh, it's lit. All right. Well, now I'm I am uh, I am off the lit. We are. That's we are, what no, the kids say now, now right? Are we, I think we're lit. We are. We are. Or it lit. is lit. We're gonna lit lit up and lit. turn the house down. Yeah. Or we're gonna turn the bed sheets down and and lit down. Oh, we're gonna. Just, <laughs> I'm gonna. Turn. We're gonna rock around the clock. <laughs> we're gonna. All night. <laughs> we're going to rock, 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 around the clock. Ah, oh, yes. Um, all right. So yeah, we've kind of covered everything. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else? Um, I, I'll show you real quick. Yeah, get, get, pop over and, and uh, show us if there might be some things that we can talk about, and then we got to wrap up because we, we we've gone a long time tonight. But that we've oh got, boy, we've got some good information that we're sharing. Right. And so uh, I'm going to be doing this through pages manager yep that's how you from the phone there's there's two ways and it's very similar between pages or the facebook uh, app yeah you're doing it, on your personal it looks exactly the same yep. exactly the same Which so is we'll unusual. go ahead and open that up i know isn't it it is kind of crazy and i also found out that this this software that i use for my tablet uh, -huh. uh it's full integration with my mouse and my keyboard so i don't even have to type on the keyboard it's all right here I'm, I'm very envious of that because the solution i have is not that way so yeah. This is this is awesome. There's Captain Picard, by the way. Um, and he's excited about it. Uh, no, I realized that I hadn't posted a Family Feud uh, game thing. I normally post one daily, and I haven't done it. And I also haven't released my 2016 year in review video. So I'm like, I'm busier than I thought that I was because I really screwed up. I need to start using uh, my my uh, later that I talked about before, so it yes. would remind me to do all that stuff. But fail, fail on my behalf. Yes. Uh, okay, so you're gonna go to post. Just like you're gonna post standard, and down here to go live, you click on that. It's going to ask you to describe your video. Hi, everybody! Some people might get a little pop-up saying, "Hey, Jared, wait, entertain is gonna go live." Yep. So we'll type something in here like, "Hey, folks, just doing a show with," and you can, I think, you can tag people in here as well. Um, for on your personal account on the business one, you might not be able to do that. Uh, DJ NCV uh, talking about Facebook Live. Smiley face, and then any other emoticon that you want to put in there. Um, from here is where you can choose you want to make it public, mm -hmm. and you can change all of that if you want to make it private or whatever else, and then your, your geo control. So if you want to let people know exactly where you're at and all that. Uh, on your upper right hand corner, it flips the camera forwards and back. It's black right now because my back camera is not covered, viewable. Covered it's by a covered, case. Yeah. Uh, so my front camera is right there. Dun, dun, dun. I'll hit go live. Three, two, one. Boom. And we're live. All right. And I'm going to see if I can like get really like inception with it. I'll point to all the little things. As long as that red live. There we go. Yeah. As long as that red uh, live symbol is red, that means you're good. That means you're golden. It's going live. If it turns gray, that means your video is paused, just as a heads up. That's the whole point of that live right there. Um, let's see here. Comments should be showing up down here at the bottom. Yep. I can write a comment for myself. So if I want to, you know, make sure, you know, make sure to visit. This website, oh, I spelled that wrong. I spelled my own website wrong. A special URL, you can send that out. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty straightforward. Like, like that's, that's about what you can do. Uh, if you have, you have to click this, hang on. nope, I don't have to, okay. Um, you normally can uh, keep certain things pinned. Oh, uh, no, I don't want to cancel, I don't want to do that. Oh, well, it ended on me. Maybe I clicked something wrong. Whoops. Anyway, that is how you go live. Yeah. It's a very simple process. It's not a complicated thing to do at all. Uh, it's something that I encourage. Uh, stop sure. There it is. It's something that I encourage everybody to do at some point in time. Um, if you can do it once a week, you're, you're good. 
if you can do it twice a week, even better. But somebody asked earlier, they're like, well, you know, what, what's going to be valuable to brides? You've got to keep in mind that even if you specialize in weddings, it's not just brides that are watching you. Um, I have made some really great connections with grooms uh, on a nerd level. You know, I, I talk about the Thor movie that's getting ready to come out. If you, if you've seen the new Thor trailer, I laughed and I still laugh at the end of that stupid teaser trailer every time I watch it because it just brings out the inner nerd in me. And I will sit across the table from a groom and he likes comic books as well, or he likes superheroes, or he likes computers or technology or whatever else. And I make that instant connection. It has nothing to do with weddings. It has absolutely nothing to do with really the bride. And it has everything to do with, I've made a connection with him do, talking about something that I have, I have a passion about and I, and I enjoy. And that's, that's how you really make your connections. So even on the corporate side, you might be able to make corporate, uh, you might be able to do videos that are, are more focused towards your corporate clients. And, you know, if you, if you get in the mindset and you pigeonhole yourself into thinking of, I only want to promote to brides or what are brides going to like, guess what? Most brides are going to like Pinterest and they're going to like pretty flowers. They're going to like, you know, pictures that show the bride looking phenomenally hot and whatever else. That's not what I do. I'm an entertainer. My job is to keep people happy, keep them engaged, keep them moving, and and keep the night flowing. That's yeah. that's why I'm there. Mm -hmm. I, and I and I can't I can't fake that by saying, oh well, if you watch this live video, I'm going to have a an in depth interview with this Pinterest queen or whatnot. No, I could still have the Pinterest queen come in, but guess what? The conversation is going to be probably stuff outside of just that that niche, that little thing right there. So um, again, whoever asked that question. Don't feel like they all have to be pigeonholed in that specific area. You know, start there, but then expand out from there. If you've got clients right now, ask them. Like, send them an email. Send them a put a put a Facebook post out there and say, "Hey, I'm thinking about doing some more Facebook Live videos and and doing some interactive things. What are a few elements and what are a few things that you would like to see as?" A bride getting married as a groom that's engaged as a couple that's already been married there's an idea bring a past bride and groom in and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them on Facebook live is it really left field and really out there well you got to get the right couple that feels comfortable doing it right. but if you do how phenomenal would that be to have them come in and sit down and talk about you know hey Jim I appreciate you coming in let them know who you are oh my name is Jim I got married last year Jared was a DJ this is what happened blah 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 blah, blah. all right cool Let's talk about X, Y, and B type of thing. You know, what, do you mind taking some questions? Here are some other people that, that have a few questions about whatever. Um, so think think way outside the box. I think I, I, I really encourage you guys that, that that's, that's the way that you're going to excel in Facebook Live is anything that you've already seen, evolve it and grow it and manipulate it and treat it like Play-Doh. And if you build something with it and it's really cool, it's it's it two two things are going to happen it's going to dry out and you're never going to play with it again or you're going to mush it all down and you're going to do something new with it and i encourage you guys keep mushing keep making the play-doh shove it in that little thing and then squirt it out and it looks like blue poop all over the place that's that's facebook live facebook live is blue poop blue poop that, that's a great way to leave this tonight so you guys can all envision that <laughs> in a couple of days <laughs> You just gotta push it out there, guys. And watch the you gotta push it, and you gotta get it all the way out of there. Let people enjoy it. The blue poop. The hashtag blue poop. Just jockey. Uh, Lewis, uh, Lewis just joined us. Um, uh, software. Hey, there's Lewis. many, many uh, different uh, uh, software. We're using Wirecast to do ours. You can use it. It can come right from the Chrome. Uh, if you're going to do just something simple, it can come right from your browser. Obviously, mobile devices can. You can use that. And mm -hmm. then uh, OBS, there's different, if you look at, if, if you go into Facebook to your, your business page and you go click to go live and it will actually give you uh, three different options that it mentions and you can, it'll tell you what, what to do. Uh, Wirecast, mm -hmm. paid version, OBS free, and I don't know the other one, I, how much that is, what have you, but uh, you go check it out there. And... Start yeah. with OBS, start with OBS, try it out. If it's something that you guys are like, oh my gosh, I love going Facebook live, then invest in it. Yeah. I would not encourage anybody to, you know, hey, drop five hundred dollars on this and then see how it works out for you. Because yeah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do what you want it to do. Start with OBS because it, it'll get you, to, it'll do exactly what you need it to do. And then if you really enjoy it, then invest in it and do something bigger. Good, good. We need to wrap up, Jared. Thank you much for for 
chatting and talking Facebook Live. If you guys have any questions and such uh, as you're watching this after the fact, please put those down in the comments section, and I'll do my best to pop out and answer as many of those as we can. If you're watching this on Facebook Live and you're going to comment below there, I'll try to be following that for a couple of days, but after two or three days, that gets so far down the news feed, I don't, uh, I don't see it anymore. So, If you have questions, tag John or myself you in your question. That way it'll Perfect. pop up. So um, you can tag, uh, well, you can tag my business, which is at Jared Wade Entertainment, um, or you can tag me at Jared Wade, and I'll get that notification that, there that there's a question there. Or you can do the same for, for John or yep. just Jockey News. Yep. That'll get us there. Good, good, good. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for watching, and we will be back next Monday night and uh, such with our Monday night shows. Good night, everyone. <sighs> <sighs>